Hi everyone, today I'll be showing you how to use the Performance Wizard. This tool walks you through various areas of your global options, helping you to choose what to disable and what options to change to optimise the loading time of your website. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos like this one. And if you don't want to miss one, click the bell icon to get notifications of all new videos on our channel. OK, let's begin. I'm on the Avada Accountant website here. The content on this website is very optimised, but at this point not all the unused options and elements etc have been disabled, which will be contributing to a lower score. So before we run the Performance Wizard, let's run a Lighthouse report to see our load scores. It's important to run the Lighthouse report on an incognito window as I'm using here. Otherwise the scores will be affected by admin asset loading. I'll just right click and choose inspect. And also as it loads this is the desktop site here and we want to test the mobile scores as that is the focus of Google's tests. So I'll just toggle the device toolbar and refresh this page just to make sure I'm getting any specific mobile content. I want to use Moto G4 as the device as that's what Google PageSpeed uses. So now I'll head to the Lighthouse tab. I'll just choose Performance on Mobile and generate the report. Now our load score here is OK, but it could definitely be better. As I mentioned, the content is highly optimised on this site, but in this case some of the options that are enabled are not needed and are slowing the site down. This is a perfect example of when to use the performance wizard. So let's head back to our logged in site and run the wizard. OK, the performance wizard can be found at Avada Performance from the WordPress sidebar or from Maintenance Performance Wizard from the Avada dashboard. As you can see on the start page, there are seven steps in the wizard. There's also a button at the top from which you can run PageSpeed Insights on your site to get an idea of your starting point before you begin the optimization process. We've already done that with the Lighthouse report, as I'm on a local server here, but this tool should give pretty much the same score. The Performance Wizard is designed to be only used once your website is complete. There's also a link to the documentation below this, which offers more information about the Performance Wizard process. We're ready to begin the wizard, so I'll just click on the Let's Start button. This takes us to the Features page. Here you can disable Avada features to help reduce the code base of your site. I'll start by clicking on the Find Recommendations button at the top. When you click this, the wizard scans the website and presents you with recommendations under each feature to help you decide whether it's needed or not. The red recommendations are suggesting the option should be changed. The green one means that the current option is appropriate, and the blue ones are the ones that can't be automated and require you to consider the options yourself. Take your time to go through each of these features individually. In this case, I'm happy with all the recommendations, so I'm going to click the Apply All button at the top, which will apply all the red recommendations. After making any changes to enabled features, a Save Changes button appears at the bottom. Make sure to click this to save your changes before heading to the next step. And so we come to the Icons page. I'll just click on Find Recommendations, and the wizard scans the site to find which icons are being used on the website. It displays a list of them, showing which pages they are being used on, and in total, and then make some recommendations based upon what's found. Here it's suggesting that I only need the solid icon subset, so I will turn the other two off. Font Awesome version 4 compatibility is also turned on here. This is only needed if you have old version 4 icons, and if you do, it's still best to turn this off and update those icons. Another optional step is to convert all your Font Awesome icons into a custom icon set. There's a link at the bottom to the documentation for this, and I'll also link it under the video here. I'll just click Save Changes, and then head to the next page. This takes us to step 4 of the wizard, Fonts. As it says at the top, in this step you can check which fonts are being loaded on your website and optimise how those fonts are served. Let's see what the recommendations are. Here it has found 5 different font variants. Open Sans is being used in the mobile menu, but it's also being used as a H6 with a different weight. This H6 is probably not being used on this site at all. So if we change this back to Manrope, bold 700, we reduce our variance by one. And if we go back to the top, we can see our recommendation goes back to green. Also with the font serving section, 
the font face rendering option is set to block, and here we could improve load times by setting it to swap all. And finally with the preload key font section, this is set to none. With this website, I know that the largest contentful paint on mobile is actually the top title element, so here I want to change this to all. When I do that, I can also preload font variants, and that top title is a bold 700, so I'll also choose that to be preloaded. I'll just save my changes. The next step of the wizard is the Avada elements. Here you can determine which design and layout elements get enabled. I'll just click on find recommendations, and the wizard scans the entire website to see which elements are being used, and leaves only those selected. Clicking on save changes is going to disable all the elements not in use. This is one of the reasons to only run the wizard on completed websites. But it also reduces the DOM size by loading fewer elements. If you wanted to add more content to the site later on using a disabled element, you can always re-enable specific elements from the Builder Options page, found under Options, Builder Options, from the Avada dashboard. OK, let's move on. The penultimate step of the Performance Wizard is the Optimization page. Again, I'll just click the Find Recommendations button. I can see Lazy Load isn't enabled, so I'll turn that on, and I'll choose the Avada method. The Enable Video Facade option is turned off, and this site doesn't use any video, so I will leave that off. But this is a good performance option to enable if you are using any YouTube or Vimeo elements. I'll disable the jQuery Migrate script, as I don't have any deprecated jQuery code, and I will turn the JS compiler to on. In the CSS optimization section, I'm going to leave the load style sheets in footer at off. We recommend leaving this off unless you're using an external critical CSS service. I will, however, turn the CSS compiling method to file as per the recommendation. And finally, down in the advanced optimization section, I'm going to turn enable gzip compression to on, as well as load jQuery in footer and enable critical CSS. The gzip option will only be available if you are on an Apache server that supports it. You may want to check with your host about this option. If it's showing up and you are unsure, you can always give it a test. As the description says in the load jQuery and footer option, this will only take effect if no other jQuery dependent scripts are added to the head. Turning this on can cause JS scripts to break, so use this option with caution. And finally, there is the new critical CSS option. Once I'm finished here, I'll head over and generate the critical CSS for the site. OK, I'll just save my changes and click on Finish Wizard. This takes us to the Finish page, and it clears the site cache and assets. The wizard also looks at how many plugins you have, as these can have a big effect on performance as well. If you have missed any possible improvements, these will be listed on the right-hand side. At the bottom are some links to specific docs that can help with your understanding of website optimization and how to perform further optimization, such as optimizing for above the fold content, and ensuring that your images are all the right size and optimized as well. OK, so before we run the Lighthouse test again, let's look at the Critical CSS page. As the description says, here you can manage Critical CSS for your pages and posts. Critical CSS is the CSS necessary for above the fold styling. When Critical CSS is available, the rest of the styles are deferred, leading to a faster render time. For this site, I'll select all pages from the drop-down list and generate the critical CSS. This takes a while to run, depending on the amount of content you have. OK, that should do it. Let's now go back to our incognito window and retest this site. I'll just refresh the page, and then rerun the report. OK, that's a much better score. The difference in score here is purely from changing options, as the content was quite optimised. But at other times it will also be the content contributing to poor scores. For an example of this, please see our How to Optimise Above the Fold content for performance video, linked below. With page load optimization, there are almost always more things you can do, like choosing faster hosting, running a CDN, installing a caching plugin, further optimising your images, and much, much more. But the performance wizard is a great first step once you have completed your site to get it up to speed. Make sure you see our further performance documents linked below the video for more tips on how to get your site loading super fast. OK, this concludes our video on how to use the performance wizard. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest videos. 
And if you have any questions or need assistance, please create a support ticket and our team will gladly assist you. As always, we want to thank you for choosing Avada.